everybody. It's Wednesday, December 6th, and this is Mike Preston at New Harbor Financial Group. Wanted to give you a quick update about things that we're seeing and doing this week. I'd like to keep it simple. I just want to talk about the main um, the main things we're looking at. I'd like to do a quick review about the broad market. We're seeing some, some changes there, at least some short-term changes that are for the positive. I'd like to talk a little bit about gold and gold miners, and then lastly, bonds. Bonds have had a big bounce, and I want to let you know what we think about it. So first, let's talk about the market. I'm going to start sharing some charts so that we can kind of walk through it together. So the market itself, and this will come up in just a minute, I'm going to start with the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has shown some real strength over the last few weeks. This is a monthly chart. And uh, some some of the viewers might remember a few weeks ago when we had this big up week, we became concerned about this downtrend being broken. And uh, because of it, we had moved our hedges down from about 4,500 on the puts that we had. I'm going to move that line right where the original put was. And we moved the, the strike price on our hedges down to 4,100. Now, the reason we did this was to relax the hedge and, and allow for more upside. Because the put option that we have in place is like an insurance contract, and as such, it has a premium. And by selling that put back a few weeks ago, when it was in the money, we were able to take a profit on it and then redeploy a much smaller amount of uh, insurance cost, if you will, into this January 4100 put. We're constantly evaluating this. We're glad we did it because it relaxed the hedge and it allowed for more upside. So the S&P has been doing quite well, continuing on its uptrend here the last few weeks. Coming into this week, it was quite extended. Uh, you know, it's been basically up every single week. And if I move to the, the daily chart, you'll see that it's, it's been pretty relentlessly straight up. We're not really seeing any, any major reasons for being concerned other than valuations. Valuations are, are, are hideous, uh, probably the best word to use. You know, valuations are way higher than they've been just about any time in history. Market cap to GDP is 180% plus. The Schiller price earnings ratio is solidly in the 30s. Uh, corporate profit margins are unusually high because of government stimulus, which is not likely to last forever. And long story short, we think that stocks will yield negative returns from this point over the next 10 years in aggregate. The problem is we don't know what's going to happen in the next few months. And at least short term, our indicators all reversed up a few weeks ago when we saw this action. You know, we don't like it, but it is what it is. And so we reduced our hedges and we started to look at a number of other things um, that had good chart patterns that were starting to break out. Some good examples are the insurance sector. We added that a few weeks ago. It's continued its move. We added uranium a month or two ago. It's continued its move, so on and so forth. We're constantly looking for new ideas. You know, right now, there's a number of things on our watch list. I'll share just a couple. Semiconductors look good. Technology looks good, but it's very extended. And we also look at individual countries. Out of them, Japan looks like the best of all of them. So we're thinking about adding a little bit more very slowly with hedges. We're presently up to about 27% stock exposure. We have the hedge on that we, I just told you about a minute ago. We want to be very careful about entering the market in a big way. Going back to the S&P, it's, it's quite possible, though I don't know if I'd say it's probable, that we see one more blow off top in the S&P. You know, moving to the weekly chart, we're very, very close to taking out that July high. This is uh, back in July 24th, I believe. If that's taken out, then it's, you know, really kind of a chip shot to the old high back here in January of 22. The big picture, though, is that for two years, the S&P has essentially gone nowhere. We're still down about 4% from the January 3rd, 2022 high. But the risks are increasing. Um, that we're going to see some kind of one more gasp blow off top. We don't love it. We think the market is sick, um, but we reduced our hedges and we started adding very 
small tactical positions in response. And so you know, we're going to try to ride a little bit of it if we can. However, we are full out cautious because of valuations. The next thing I'd like to share is uh, another thing that we're noticing. For the longest time, it's been a very, very narrow market. This market's been driven by only seven stocks, the Magnificent Seven, the Magic Seven. There's a lot of different names for them. I mean, the NASDAQ is up 30 something percent. The S&P is up somewhere in the teens. And yet the Russell 2000, the mid cap stocks and the equal weighted S&P has spent most of the year basically going nowhere. Let's take a quick look at them now. That's changed in the last week or two. So here's the beginning of the year. Here's the equal weighted S&P. It's basically flat all year. Actually, was even pretty weak. But all of a sudden, we're starting to see a broadening here in the action. This is the equal weighted S&P 500. The Russell 2000 has been flat most of the year. But all of a sudden, it's been on a tear the last couple of weeks. So we're watching very closely. So here, here's the equal weighted S&P. I just showed the chart a minute ago. And this is a point and figure chart, which we like to use because it compresses time. This gray line here is the beginning of the year. So most of the year, it was doing pretty much nothing, going plus and minus, but not really making any progress. All of a sudden, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a sharp increase in the equal weighted. And it's brought it back to this, you might say, downtrend line. If it gets a breakout here and the market continues to broaden out, um, you know, that further supports the reasons why we're concerned that another blow off top could happen. Take a look at the relative strength chart of the equal weighted S&P 500 compared against money market fund. So we compare things against all kinds of other indicators all the time. One of the more useful ones is comparing against money market, because after all, your alternative is to sit in the money market at 5%, still 5% on the short end right now. Well, for the first time, you know, we've seen the relative strength of the equal weighted reverse up into X's. X's means it's had three consecutive box moves higher. It's a sign of short-term relative strength. And while the S&P cap weighted is still in what we would say O's, it hasn't been able to progress three boxes up. So the equal weighted in the, in the very near past is stronger than the cap weighted. This is completely new. This hasn't been the case for quite a while. And in fact, the equal weighted S&P has been up three straight weeks in a row. So that's the first time all year we're seeing this. So of course, we continue to scour for ideas and we don't want to take too much risk, nor do we want to plunge in, but we have to be open-minded to the fact that things are firming up, at least in the near term. Gold has had an interesting move and... This is all while the dollar has been relatively strong over the last year. Here's gold right here, GLD. Interestingly, gold had an overnight move the other night up to $2,130 an ounce. It had a quick reversal off of that. But if we look at GDX, for instance, you'll see that it had a great week last week. But still, it's lagging. It should be somewhere up here. GDX should be somewhere you know, up near 35 or so if it was where it was last time gold was this high. So we'll see if we play catch up. We're hoping that's the case and we think that's the case. Silver, quick look at silver. Let me go out to the monthly because I think it shows it better. A big, huge bullish consolidation pattern here on a triangle. It looked like it too was gonna rock it out of here, but it broke that downtrend and then quickly reversed. Going back to the weekly chart, you kind of see that we're just sitting back under the downtrend line. So we'll see. Hopefully that's not a fake out. I think it was a real move, but we're going to need to start seeing that move higher sometime soon in the next few weeks. Lastly, a giant bounce in bonds. If we go to the weekly chart, it doesn't look that impressive because gold, um, I'm sorry, bonds had a mammoth meltdown last year and then another capitulation just a few weeks ago. But let's go to a daily chart. Just see how big this bounce in bonds has been. I do believe this was a capitulation point. If not a final capitulation point, I think this is a capitulation point at least for many months, You know, maybe six to 12 months or more. So TLT, long-term bonds, has been consolidating in an uptrend in this trend channel. 
Last couple of days, we've had two strong back-to-back -back days. And now we're firmly between the 50 and 200 day moving average. This is an obvious place to take profits if you happen to buy back here or at least hedge. We sold calls on half of our position. Um, you know, we are in the money on those now. We probably will um, we probably will do something with this position where we're considering whether we take tax loss um, action on this. We probably will probably let this piece get called away, then sell the other piece. And we'll probably reestablish a position in long bonds uh, because we think the bigger picture is that they're going higher. You go back to the weekly chart. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see TLT go back to 110 or 120. It's not going to be in a straight line. And this is definitely getting overdone here in the short term. We're very strongly out of this uptrend channel. These moving averages being in between them is an obvious consolidation point. So here's a good spot to hedge. If you're long TLT, if you don't have any short calls, I'd say sell some calls up at 98, 97, 98, something like that and or take off part of your position. If you're a long-term investor, you can just sit back and let it be. It's been a difficult year in some aspects and that we had a big drop in long bonds, a big drop in gold. So we had headwinds all year, but the last month or so has been, has been great. And uh, we continue to look for opportunities. We've got no doubt we're gonna have opportunities. The big picture for us is the resolution of this bear market. We do believe we're in a bear market. We do believe that even if the market goes higher, um, that proper equilibrium valuations are much lower than here. And we think we've got the skills to navigate that and to layer into the market and get into the market with hedges. Hasn't been easy. Uh, money printing has distorted all markets. A lot of the rules don't seem to apply anymore, but valuations matter, math matters. And we will continue to update you every week and tell you exactly what we're doing. For now, we want to say thank you very much for watching. And for our clients, thank you very much for your trust and your patience. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.